Right, so Remco and Vinopol obviously absolutely destroyed the TT in the Giro today. Now the question is, kind of like, is the Giro over, but also like, how impressive was this ride? So first we'll kind of go, is the Giro over? Well, I don't think it is, because I think he obviously did put a lot of time into people, and there is another TT coming up. So like, you know, obviously you'd expect this plus a longer TT, maybe it's going to be another kind of minute, minute and a half up over people. But I think, you know, it... It's not necessarily over. There's a lot of people within a minute. There's a lot of strong teams who have a lot of riders who are within a minute out of UE and Ineos. So I don't really think it's over. But I think what it does go to show is just how good Remco is when he targets a race and turns up. And he said he was going to be in A-grade condition. And wow, 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 this man was in A-grade condition. So obviously he had a tailly, but still he averaged close to like 60 kilometers an hour um, for, the, for the first part of the TT, which is just crazy. Like to be just going 60 kilometers an hour on his own, nah, slide downhill, but with a tailie is absolutely ridiculous. Now we're getting some watts as well, but the thing is like, they're just obscene and there's kind of no way to really like illustrate it without going over to here. So you see like, okay, number one, a lot of these guys on Shimano Palmiers, so we just have to take it all with a pinch of salt. Obviously all Palmiers is kind of inaccurate, but anyway, uh, we'll get that caveat out of the way. So like Amaral did 427 watts and lost 40 seconds on this flat part, right? So you kind of go, okay, yeah, like, what's Remco doing? Okay, he's more aero, but he did put 40 seconds in people. It's like, well, he just has to be doing at least 400. Like, you know, you just can't do the maths in your head where you're like, well, he just is. Um, so we go on to Velon, and they have this infographic where they obviously won't release his full power data. But the first three and a half minutes, he averaged 430 watts. Now, he might have gone out a little bit hard, but like at 61, 62 kilos, that's like around seven watts per kilo which is like ridiculous, but then it's also kind of like, well, what do you expect? Like these guys climb 6.3 watts per kilo for 40 minutes, halfway through a grand tour. Like, you know, what are they doing fresh for 20? Yeah, probably about seven. Does Remco have a drop off in TT position? Probably not. So I was kind of like shocked. And then I kind of thought about it again. I was like, well, what did I expect him to do? Like six and a half? No, like no, no. So, you know, I, I think it's different because Remco has no drop off in TT position. But if we look at... Sivakov, yeah, not a great ride. Um, he did 411 watts for 17 minutes on the flat. And you might say, okay, that's good. It's like 5.9. Yeah, but like this guy fresh 20 minutes is doing 6.6 .6 minimum. Like, let's be honest, he's doing a lot more watts than this. So, you know, it's probably, it could be broken for sure. But I think it does go to show that like not everyone is good on time trial bikes. And that's just the way it is. Obviously, again, he might be doing less watts because he's just trying to get really aero. And I think that's where Remco comes into his own is that he's doing mad watts and is really, really aero. Um, then we look at like someone that's like Cepeda and you can see he's doing like 336 watts going 53k an hour. And this is probably like, well, you can't, okay, well, Cepeda's a small boy. Like he must be close to being 50 kilos and his 336 watts gets him 53k an hour. Like I know Remco's arrow, but like, do you know what I mean? He's doing 60k an hour. That's seven, like six kilometers an hour quicker. Like it really is, you know, he's just got to be doing a lot of watts. Um, and I think that's really where it comes down to. Yeah. And I think also you can see here, like people, Derek G, someone told me about this. He does ridiculous watts, but he's on Israel. So it obviously goes really slowly. But again, like 442 watts, be strong 456. Like, these guys are strong and like it's early on. It's the first TT, obviously they're doing a lot of watts. But I think what it goes to show if we go back to kind of the time results is that yeah, Remco like is really strong. Um, but you know, the Giro is not one on the first day. But also I think if you just look at the profile, like stage by stage, um, you know, it, it's like obviously extremely hard in the final week. Like we've got this flat TT coming up, um, which again is long, 35K, you could put another minute into people. But then when you start to see stuff like this, uh, like, you know, 2,300 meters, you know, vast, uh, Paso Valparola, Campagnolo, um, Paso Jao, Campo Longo, sorry, uh, Tre Corci, um, and Tre Cimi de la Varedo, like, you know, this could be a two minute stage and then you have Lusari afterwards. Like, you know, there's so much time, places you can lose time. Uh, and again, finishes Monte Bodone, 23 kilometer climb. Like there are times where you can lose, you can lose time for sure. Um, but even like this stage, it's kind of like a medium mountain stage, finishes in Bergamo. Um, you know, it's like kind of a mini Lombardia route. People can lose a lot of time. So I think, I think it's like massive reason to really, to really panic for people. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, it's all gone. But I think he does go to show that fresh 20 minute on a TT bike, the man is a joke. Um, and again, like if we go back to today, 
he the Ghana he didn't put time into him on the first split really like he sorry he put time into Ghana on the first split so like it's a ridiculous performance but then I think it goes to show that like the GC guys here onwards are all very similar you know eight uh, Almeida did a good time for sure better than expected maybe but you know thirty seconds between Almeida and uh, Vlasov kind of where you expect to be you know a couple of guys further down like Sivakov Karthi had a shocker but most people you know kind of where you expect Roglic maybe didn't do quite as well but. It's not a massive loss. I mean, it's just Remco is really the outlier. If he wasn't here, this would, would be normal for sure. You'd think, okay, Gana won by seven seconds, fair enough. But just an absolutely crazy performance from Remco. And um, yeah, super interesting to see if he can hold his form all the way through to the third week. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one.